So we're here at the example table, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the ratio test. But before we do that, let's go back to geometric series. So a geometric series is something of the form a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus a times r cubed, and so on. So if we let a sub n equal a times r to the n, then well, we already know that a geometric, the convergence of a geometric series is determined entirely by the value of r. So if a sub n is a times r to the n, then the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is just r, because we get a sub n plus 1 by taking a sub n and multiplying it by r. So this is always equal to r. So this is true for every n. So this series converges if the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is less than 1. This is just a restatement of what we already know about geometric series, right? If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then, it conver then the series converges. Uh, so this series converges if this is less than 1, and it diverges. Oop, there we go. If this ratio, or more accurately, the absolute value of this ratio is greater than or equal to 1. So we're going to use this basic idea to talk about the ratio test. The ratio test says that we can look at the limit of these ratios, and based on their, uh, their value relative to 1, we can tell whether the series converges or diverges. So let's state that test now. So, the ratio test uh, begins by supposing that the limit as n approaches infinity, that's supposed to be an arrow, limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is L. So L could be infinity. We're including that as uh, under the heading of this limit exists, but it can't oscillate. It has to be either a real number or infinity. So if this limit equals L, we can conclude that if L is less than 1, then the series sum from n equals 0 to infinity a sub n converges. In fact, we can conclude more, it converges absolutely. And if uh, L is greater than 1, then the same series diverges. And intuitively, this, this is saying that if these, ratios, uh, if these ratios are less than 1, then this thing in some sense behaves in the long run like a geometric series whose, uh, with a value of r less than 1. If, it if L is greater than 1, then in the long run this behaves like a geometric series whose ratio is greater than 1. Now, one thing to note, neither of these cases include the case where L equals 1. So note, this test is inconclusive if L equals 1. So there are cases where a series, um, there's a series of a sub n's where this limit equals 1 and the series converges. Another series where this limit equals 1 and it doesn't converge. So this test doesn't tell you anything when L equals 1. So let's look at two examples.
So does the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n over e to the n converge? Well, we know the behavior of this sequence. In the long run, uh, e to the n is much larger than n, so these terms are going to 0. But does the denominator grow so much faster than the numerator so the actual series converges? Well, we can use the ratio test to determine that. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And in this case, since all these terms involve only positive quantities, we don't need the absolute values when we substitute. So we get the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over e to the n plus 1. This thing divided by n over e to the n. And when we simplify, we get the limit as n approaches infinity. Well, I shouldn't say simplify. When we, uh, instead of dividing by this, we multiply by its reciprocal, we get the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n times e to the n over e to the n plus 1. This thing goes to 1. This is actually fixed. It's just 1 over e. So this is 1 over e, which is less than 1. So by the ratio test, this series converges. In fact, it's, it converges absolutely. But of course, if this series converges at all, it must converge absolutely because all the terms are positive. Let's take a look at one more example. Let's ask ourselves whether the series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n times n factorial over 6 to the n, whether this thing converges. Once again, let's apply the ratio test. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So when we take the absolute value, what's going to change? Well, the n factorial doesn't change. The 6 to the n doesn't change. The only thing that's going to change is this negative 1 to the n. And the negative 1 to the n is either plus or minus 1. So when we take the absolute value, these all become 1. So the limit of the ratios, that, the ratios that we care about, just n factorial over 6 to the n. So we have n plus 1 factorial over 6 to the n plus 1. And let's immediately multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So times 6 to the n over n factorial. When we simplify this, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 factorial over n factorial simplifies to be n plus 1, right? Because when we, if you, if you think of expanding n plus 1 factorial, it's n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on. n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So everything that shows up here in n factorial also shows up in n plus 1 factorial. So when we divide, we're left with just n plus 1. 6 to the n over 6 to the n plus 1 leaves us with just a 6. This limit is infinity, much greater than 1. So by the ratio test, this series diverges. So I'll leave you with the question, can you use the ratio test with the series from n equals 0 to infinity of cosine of n over n squared?